Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? Stop what you're doing and, and listen. D-O-D-45. As Scroobius Pip would put it, welcome, welcome, welcome. On this episode 74 of the DoD 45 show, we welcome our guest, Mestizo. He's an underground rapper of the Makana Muerte family and the other half of one of my current favorites, Alpha, a group that I'm willing to call a super duo of which Mestizo shares MC duties with the legendary Dose One. We have a nice, chill conversation with Steez talking about Alpha's recent release entitled Many Headed, which is a brilliant EP. We also briefly chat about his coming from a long lineage of gangsters, including a gangster grandma, and he tells us his chilling experience he personally had with a ghost. We also learn that Steez has a huge collection of quote-unquote old man clothes, and he tells us the tale of a time he was on tour with Mopes, and he told the Texas Patrolman that they were a Christian rock band to avoid getting a ticket. We have the utmost respect for anyone who has aligned themselves with our show, ostensibly leading into discussions of the deafness of Dose 1 and how lucky we all are as listeners to have the return of Alpha. We also get to learn a lot more about Mestizo through the DoD 45 Dish segment with answers to Mestizo's firsts, worsts, and favorites. All of that plus a handful of Sophie's Choice questions citing names like the B-52s, B-Real, Michael Rappaport, Remy, Mini Driver, Faith Hill, Corpse Bride, Ray Charles, Jeremy Piven, Jeremy Renner, and a handful of others. We hit it off real quick with Mestizo, which makes this one of them nice, concise, chill kind of chats. So throw the laundry in the bin, brush off the layers of bass, holster your switchblades, line up your lazy eyes, and zone in on this episode 74 of the DoD 45 show with Mestizo. Peace! D-O-D 45 Okay, yeah, that you're, so you, you've heard in the intro, our guest today is Mestizo. Um, I'm, my, my brains are all over the place, so I apologize. Um, but you and I just got back from Chicago. <laughs> we were there for a total of... 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Mostly all traffic. Yeah. Um, cause I had to deliver a painting. Adrian knows this, but to, to the rest of you people that are listening, uh, I was delivering a painting, my last supper painting to a collector out there. So we quickly went to go deliver the painting and, and then had to hurry back. Quick, by quickly, you mean we got up at five in the morning, drove all day, <laughs> yes. ran it to the guy into his house, hopped back in the car, turned around, drove right back. We're about a four and a half hour drive from Chicago, so. And then we just got home about an hour ago. But he paid a good penny for it, so yeah, it was worth delivering. I'd rather just t- deliver the painting than, than ship it, because you never know these days with shipping. So I'm, my brain scrambled. My I haven't shaved. <laughs> I need. Yeah, I got to get my brain on track. How's your brain? My brain's yeah. working. How I decided to drink water again, so that's good. <laughs> so I think it's working a little bit better. I hate drinking water. I hate it so bad. It is such a chore. Isn't our brain made up of a whole bunch of is like mostly water? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're not drinking water, you'd probably. Got yeah, and I dehydrate. The sh- I, de- I just dehydrate myself. I hate drinking water so much. But here, I have my big, gigantic cup of water. Well, I, I, you know, I love drinking water, but in the winter or as it starts getting colder, I drink less and less water. Yeah, you know what? You know how I was saying yesterday I was starving? I was just freaking starving all day. Well, I think it's because it just turned cold. Cause I'm like a bottomless pit. I just oh, want to eat wait. everything. And I didn't even, we went to Terra Taco yesterday and they have burritos that are this big. I ate the whole thing and, and, I, so and I wasn't even full. <laughs> I was like, I could, I could have had chips with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, in the winter, everything changes everything. As, as it gets colder. I have really forced myself to drink water because I don't get thirsty. Don't they say that most people, like you start to, not you, but... Well, I know I do. I start putting on the the pounds to stay warm in the winter. <laughs> I think I just put them on because I'm bored. That's but, just an excuse. But I was, I really was hungry. <laughs> well, our, um, what's uh, we're because we're running so so late. We'll uh, we'll uh, just jump right in. Well, our guest today is mestizo. Um, do you, oh, I was going to ask you. Do you know what the de- definition of the word mestizo is, Adrian? Yeah. Um. That's when, like, you exercise your back. What? Really hard. <laughs> I 
know. Why, why, no, why, why did you think that, though? No, that was interesting. Um, don't you have, like, a trapeze back? A trapeze? Trapezoids? <laughs> Your traps? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. No, so it's kind of. Uh, oh, a go- I don't. Know. Yeah, no, mestizo. Are you gonna drink more Spanish. water? It's a, uh, it's a person of mixed race, especially having one of the mixes being Spanish. Well, that's the the term mestizo is, uh, yeah, not has this nothing to do with our guest other than his name. His his oh, alias really? is mestizo. Why did he choose that? I believe he is, um, he, possibly Filipino and Spanish, maybe. Indigenous. Well, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I won't. I'm not gonna guess what what someone's nationality. Is that what the t- term is? Nationality or race? Well, let's not. Let's not get into that. I think it is. <laughs> Do you call it a, your race? Like ethnicity. Like I'm Samo, and that's my ethnicity, mm-hmm. not my race. I think we're all, unless you happen to be a robot, a robot, or. Um, Drink more water, Adrian. Uh, a caveman? What's the caveman called? Not Homo sapien. I don't know. Even, well, I know that some of us do have that caveman. You know the word. I know the word. We uh, all have it. Or not, no, some people have found that they have that. Uh, Neanderthal. <laughs> or Neanderthal, as some people call say it. But... Otherwise, I think we, we all belong to the same race. Oh. Homo sapien. Uh, oh. Well. Um, uh, does that sound like I'm saying I don't see color? No. It just sounds, I was, yeah, I don't know what that sounds. But this is uh, how <laughs> Neanderthals walk. Neanderthal. <laughs> Neanderthal. No, that's how a robot walks. Why would it, well, anyway, we're getting bogged down. <laughs> they're going. <laughs> Food. <laughs> Rocks. Here, I'm going to do a few things real quick. I'm going to do a movie share, and the movie share is called Nandor Fodor and the Talking Mongoose. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, you and Sol watched that yeah. the other night, and he really hated that mongoose. Yeah. He, he told me well, all about it yeah, on the Yeah, the drive. voiceover is really weird. It's creepy. But it's a really cool, it's a really cool kind of movie. So, yeah, me and, me and uh, uh, Sol watched it the other night. Uh, it stars Simon Pegg and Minnie Driver and Christopher Lloyd. Uh, Christopher Lloyd is, you know, Doc from... from Back to the Future, yes. Um, yeah. So the the it's a it's a pretty good movie. It came out in twenty twenty three. Um, it's kind of like a an endearing movie. It's based on I guess a, a true story when this um, famous paranormal psychologist named Doctor Nandor Fodor uh, went to go investigate a family in England or Yorkshire. I guess that's that the same place. Yorkshire, New Yorkshire yeah. would be a place within in Eng- England. Well, so he went to go investigate a or family's Scotland. claim that they I think had England a, had all the shires, shires. Um, well, so he goes to investigate his family that has a. They claim that they have a, a talking mongoose living in their barn. So he goes to expose the lot. What he feels is a lie. Uh, it's a really kind of a endearing kind of movie. I liked it. It was cool. But yeah, the voiceover is really weird. It's creepy. Um, the voiceover for the mongoose. So there's actually a talking mongoose in the film. Doesn't it seem like a mongoose should be more like a duckbill platypus? It does. That's what our so, that's what Soul said oh, when really? he was like, "Is isn't a mongoose like a duckbill platypus?" That's I was like, funny. "No, I think it's just like a little it's like rodent a ferret." Yeah, it's not even really all that interesting. Anyway, the movie's based off a of leg the legend of this of uh, the legend of Jeff, the talking mongoose. Uh, mm. It was a story that existed. Uh, in, the, in the British tabloids in the early 1930s. Oh, so um, recent. Pretty recent. Yeah. Like, I was yeah, thinking I mean, like, like ancient oh, lore. Oh, like an ancient lore. Oh. No. So there, yeah, check out that movie. It's called no, Nandor Fodor and the Talking Mongoose. By the way, um, Christopher Lloyd is 85 years old and he looks so good in the movie. He doesn't look like oh. all frail and stuff. It's bizarre. And then my song share is um, a song called One After 606 by the Gamma Rays. Um, and it's just an interesting song. Um, it's on a compilation album called Halloween at High Noon, Corpus Vile. Now, is that the old punk cover band from Salt Lake City, Utah? 
the Gamma Rays? I really couldn't tell you, but I do think I think it is. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting song. Check it out. And then um, uh, a real quick quote. I'm not waving, I'm drowning. That's Aesop Rock. I thought we weren't doing any more quotes. Yeah, you said that. Oh. You thought that. Oh. So yeah, our guest is Mestizo. He's a rapper from Los Angeles and the co-founder of the collective uh, Machina Muerte. He's got a very distinct voice and it's on high display at mestizo.bandcamp.com with his latest single called Things. Bust through the door like honey, I'm home. Things hit, seen shit, honeycomb, breathe it in. Adam's out for root, strong cows abducted, grinding neutrons. Bow down, west sides, brown pride. Fuck whoever side you on, I'll move on. Who's ever got kiss the shoe, goon, why? It's the dude, goo, die. Give me the loot, I want all your things removed, the moolah. Uh, he's been putting out music for a couple of decades now with his debut album from 2024, or sorry, 2004, called Life Like Movie. Um, he followed up that album with the 2005 album he did with Mike Gao, and that album's called Blind Faith. And then there's a handful of dope EPs from Denier in 2012, Everybody's Enemy that he did with Isaiah Toothtaker. My racing, I'm tired of pacing, I'm complacent. My matters like time matters and five bananas. Lost my mind, but found Atlantis, but what's the matter? The jerk reactions are curing habits of good reactors. Turning backwards from this curtain madness. Should the damage is blurry patch and a ball of fire on this burning atlas. Should the kill us all alive when we stir disaster? Come on, be holding on the time when it's time to back up. Come on, be watching on your front when you bring And then the, there's the 2014 EP Underlord the 2019 EP Golden, and the 2019 EP called Barbecue Part 1 that he made with Mediogre. Um, you better act quick before we get spastic. Too many glass jaws and the whole world's plastic. Mm. So attractive, but so inaccurate. The tech control the masses. So the soul to cash, your boat is so so backwards. I'm vulnerable to flashes, so I pull my soul back in. Yes. And I just barely realized that media. So mediocre is a producer. I just barely realized when you say that fast, it's mediocre. <laughs> uh, in 2020, he released an album called Couch with Controller Seven. I have that vinyl back there. That's a really good, uh, really good album. Uh, in 2023, he did an album called I W W I W. That's an acronym for It Was What It Was. And the tracks. There's some tracks on there produced by Mopes, Controller Seven, and Mediocre. Listen deep when I speak, I'm only telling two stories First person, hell and glory It's all the rules of the roads and the corners Looking through the street, you ain't gonna find a week of warriors Only soldiers, holding up the poor of his fathers Impoverished, monster conscious, so we hustle for the sources Suckers want a static, kick a habit, tightly package Automatic, it's a rapid fear, rapping all the yapping And the fact is, it can back it up um, And that was a follow-up to his 2021 album, I-I-W-I-I -I -I. Mm. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. The other one was it was what it was. Um, he's a member of the group Alpha, or as my Alexa calls it, A7 Fa. <laughs> uh, their 2019 self-titled album blew the doors off. I can't even tell you how much pain I done caused from the hurt that I felt from my veins to my jaws from the chain to my flaws. Call me by my name first, that'll be your last face. Smelt as a heart burst, I revert to my whole ways with no hesitation. Ain't no mystery in how God works. I'm sick into my sin, think of it as something sacred. Only I can cop a hand and I'm very And then their Alpha 2 blew the roof off in 2022. Rappers are horny, caught in a toxic masculine. The recent EP, Many Headed, is currently blowing my head off, blowing my mind up. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's awesome. Persistence, bow before the image, this vehicle, friend of end the hindrance, ignorance, plentiful, centrifuge, set of peace. Coward to its presence, back to get back in the lease, back to meat wagon, keep cats a beast, to scale the cat, stay with greed, it ain't a snatch of our leader. When you influence by its changes, I'm a statue through the seasons and disbelief. I love Alpha, um, and, to, and uh, yeah. Uh, he and Dose One, that, so Alpha is uh, he and Dose One. Um, I do remember. Yeah, he and Dose sound really great together. Uh, they're a proper duo. Uh, I really, really, really enjoy it. So if you haven't heard of Alpha, check them out. 
Um, on the acronym front, he has posted that there's a future project called IWBWIWB. <laughs> Can it you be get... what it be? <laughs> Close. It would um, be what it be? Yeah, it would. It will there's be. Too many letters. It'll be what it will be. For my brain. <laughs> All right, that's enough rambling from me, but not nearly enough in regards to uh, Mestizo's accomplishments, but it's time. Let's meet him. We'll be right back after this with Mestizo. Yo, check it out, everybody. Guess who is on the DOD 45 with my man Arbi Tai? The one, the only, the majestic, the mysterious mestizo that's right that's my dude mestizo mestizo so check it out listen 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 ladies and gentlemen can i please have your attention stop what you're doing and listen d-o-d 45 this is the DOD 45 show, drawing over discussions 45 minutes with a special guest. Welcome. I'm your host and resident artist, Ty of Art by Ty, and with my co host, Adrian Taiwali'i, we're having conversations with people who I admire and am inspired by. On this episode, I'll set a 45 minute timer, put my pen to the paper, and we'll learn about our guest through an interview style discussion. So stay right here with us to experience some laughs and maybe even learn a thing or two. Fine. Well, man, all right. I appreciate you joining us today, on, and especially on such last minute. Um, I've been just constantly, nonstop listening to um, uh, Alpha, but like just constantly. It's uh, and uh, great, yeah, I, I, you'll hear that in the intro. I go off on that because it's just you guys fucking sound great together. Man, but I'm, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to have you on the show. Happy to be here, man. Happy to be here for sure. All right, so for the next 45 minutes, I'm going to draw you a picture and we're going to have a discussion. Sweet. Uh, uh, Before I get going into that, I just discovered something today when I was doing my, um, like, prep for the the show. I did, I I apologize, but I wasn't aware of um, Mestizo and the Heavy 12s. Yeah, and that's a pretty, pretty rare record, man. That's um, the homie Egads from San Diego. And another homie who's the drummer, Snakefoot, he's from Albany, New York, and he lives in L.A. now. But they were doing a project together, and they hit me up to do a track, and we did a track. And it sounded so good, and we were like, let's just make a project. So we made the project, and I can't remember, 2016 or something like that, and it's phenomenal. We've only done two shows together, one that... uh, Gas Lamp Killer Spot in LA and then another in San Francisco with Billy Woods and Chesky. Oh shit, yeah. Yeah, Chesky was, uh, he he had hit me up and he was like, hey man, I'd love to put that project out. Um, so yeah. Wait, so was it, what, so is uh, is that, on, that's a fake four? That's a fake four it's, record, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. shit, then I should know that one. Now I feel even worse. Uh, it went under the <laughs> radar, man, as a lot of shit does because I'm not really like, I just, don't push it like that. Like, yeah. should I probably should, but I don't know, man. I was having kids at the time, and I was just, I just want to create music and put it out. That's it. Yeah, I, well, I, I will get this timer started to draw, but I, but I did, I watched your guys's, um, I watched it the first time when you guys released it when you were, uh, I think you were talking about the many headed or when it was you, uh, mediocre and, and dose on that on the cam on the feed, but it was you were either talking about Alpha Two or it was probably Alpha Two. Yeah, it was a nice long discussion, but you, you guys were talking about how you feel. Oh, it was it was too because you guys were talking about how you just kind of got back together and there was less pressure to. There's less pressure to put shit out like. Less pressure, yeah, absolutely. I wonder if that's age or or your priorities now that you have kids that your priorities sort of change a bit or. I think it has to do with being underground, to be honest, man. Like the whole morale of underground hip hop, for me at least, and I know Dose too, and Meaty. It's like we weren't in it to get some sort of fame. We were in it to push our art because there's like a invisible line of respect you're trying to hit with your music. You know what I mean? Respect yes. means the world. A lot of us from the underground were putting out shit to impress our peers. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, you know, whatever, whoever slug heard this and he was like, oh, this is tight. And he reposted it. And it's like, same for him to us. There's a, a level of uh, pride in that respect that comes from your peers. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, absolutely. That's where the riches yeah. are, you know? All right. Well, I'm going to get this timer started. I, I usually I, I come up with like uh, something. I'm going to, I have an outline sketch just so, cause it's, you know, how, asking questions and drawing at the same time sometimes can be hard, but I'm fucking going to go for it. I like drawing wolves. I'm going to draw you a wolf, maybe like hey. a many headed <laughs> wolves. Uh, how are you with um, celebrity news? Do you keep up on anything that's happening with celebrities at all? I mean, I, I was in that world for a very long time, so not really, man. I, <laughs> I'm such an anti-establishment kind of dude. Well, I'm going to hit you with two celebrities, and I'm going to... And so here's the question. Who who recently had a incident with the snowplow? Jeremy Piven or Jeremy Renner? It's got to be Piven. It's got to be Piven for sure. <laughs> That's what you would he think. He seems like a snowplow kind of guy. It was actually Jeremy Renner, and it was it nearly killed him. Really? Damn. Yeah, he got he got out. He was snow plowing, and he got out to try to uh, or to talk to the neighbor, and the thing started rolling. Oh, so no. he tried to jump into the car seat to stop it, and it rolled over him. Yeah, like crushed his lung. Like damn near killed him. Wow, dude, that's sad, man. He's the blue guy from uh, the that Groot show. Is he? No, he's the guy from the the. The that bank robbing movie, right? With uh Yes. The um the town with town. Ben Affleck. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and he's also Adrian, he's also the Marvel guy. That's um, what I'm thinking. Oh, oh right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, that's who he is. Hawk Hawk no uh, yes, he's one of the Hawkeye or something like that. Um all, all right, what about cats or dogs? Dogs for sure, man. I'm not a uh, cat person. Yeah, that's funny. That's that actually works since Dose is so so much a cat person. And he loves dog cats, person. and I, I think he's gonna be sad to hear this, but I fucking hate cats. I can't stand them. <laughs> they drive me fucking nuts. Are you a certain dog breed kind of person? I like big dogs. I don't like little dogs either. Yeah. Well, that's what I was gonna ask you. Uh, oh, if you had to get a dog, do you have a dog? All right, my dog actually just died. Oh, oh shit, man! Sorry. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Uh, it's thanks, man. He was a uh, um, an old English bulldog, which they're actually uh -huh. the size of Rottweilers. They're big. They're big, muscular bulldogs, and he's just the sweetest, sweetest dog, man. His name's with Chubbs. <laughs> Chubbs is a good name. Was yeah. he around for a while then? He lived about eight years. They don't live long. Yeah, they don't they have a long life. Them. Yeah, yeah. Any of those big dogs, they they their heart kind of fails. Yeah, right then. yeah, yeah. The big dogs do. Yeah, we had a big old gray Pyrenees, and she did not last too long. I love big dogs, man. I just like a big dog I can hug, you know. Well, okay. So if there was a replacement, would would it be a golden retriever or a golden doodle? Fuck golden doodles, bro. I'll take a golden <laughs> retriever any day. A golden doodle represents a certain kind of human. My wife says this all the time. She's like, "Fucking golden doodles, look it." Look at those people. They're like the kind of people that drink like pumpkin lattes in the winter with <laughs> those thin like uh, bubble goose vests, the thin like blue, navy blue vests with like fucking, it's like it's winter time. You need something more than that and the golden doodle on your arm, you know? And then they wear a big old puffy jacket in the summer. Oh, <laughs> yeah, funny. yeah. They, they don't know what they're doing with their life, so they get a golden doodle. Sometimes at these festivals... All I see are some sort of doodle, and I think eventually that's just going to be doodles everywhere. We're only going to have doodles. How did that even happen? They started appearing out of nowhere in the past five years. So they started breeding the poodle with everything because then it makes it so that it doesn't shed and you're less allergic. So in theory, I can get it, but at the same time, I don't know. They're in. They're breeding inbreeding you know yeah fucking i just can't stand it man <laughs> i don't care you know chad from fucking the upper echelon of philadelphia might like it but i i'm not into it you know i don't like them was this chad um uh, just a uh, random chad <laughs> there's so many in philly man my wife's from philly and i lived in south philadelphia for 10 years and they're everywhere out there they're fucking everywhere you just never stop seeing a guy with an orange frappuccino in his hand picking up golden doodle shit. <laughs> nuts. Uh, wh where do you prefer to watch a TV or movie from at home, in couch or, or in a bed? Oh, absolutely the couch, man. 
I like yeah. the couch because I can run to the the kitchen. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Who? What about this? Who's a Who's a better blind piano player, Stevie Wonder or Ray Charles? Oh, Ray Charles. Hands down, wow. Ray Charles. I'm blue blues all the way. Blues is my first love. Is it? Yeah. Do you, do you, do you play instruments? I or do. do. Yeah, I play guitar. Oh. I can play guitar and uh, bass. Oh, I can do you play have some a- drums too? What, what what do you have a particular kind of blues that you like? Or are you good with any kind of blues? Delta blues, uh, ah. Lincoln Hopkins, anything that's really like sad and music made for drinking and crying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that something that just hits deep to the core of the soul. Like something that. Yeah. You. Don't take this as a challenge. Yet. I'm just wondering: Have you ever been to um, uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi? Never. I want to though. Oh, yeah. to Mississippi. I want to go. Yeah, you should go. That yeah, cause I'm a big blues fan. I fucking I've loved the blues always. And so we, we used to go there's this place called the Shack Up Inn in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And then yeah, also one that Morgan Freeman owns. Morgan Freeman owns a place called Ground Zero. Right, and that place right, is right. pretty dope. Yeah. And then right across from it's another place called Reds, and Red's like a real legit fucking delta blues like he only has budweiser That's oh it. my god <laughs> you can't you go if you go in there and try to ask for anything fancy he's like get the fuck out <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> like no that. Lattes. He, there's no lattes there <laughs> that's like the soul and, of american music right there man yeah yeah and that town that town clarksdale is real gritty and it, yeah. you feel and when you're walking around there's the blues museum and if it's really fucking cool so yeah if you ever get a chance yeah, you should definitely go check that out. Happen. Yeah, gonna... definitely go down to the Delta. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's not, that's not a too too terrible of a road trip for you. No, not at all. No, that's um, maybe like I mean, eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. You're down there, but you're not way down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we we usually have this we have this segment on the show. It's called the Sage's Social Media Lurk. Um, where Sage comes on and, and lurks your social media, but he messaged me and said, uh, turns out uh, CISO doesn't have any social media for me to lurk. So he asked me to ask this. He did give me a, a little nugget to ask that was intriguing to me. Sage Francis? Uh, yeah. He said that... Um, he said that he heard about a situation when you were down in Texas and you told the cop that you were a Christian rock band. <laughs> you, you and Mopes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, so yeah, his name back then was Prolific. That's how I know. I still call him Prolific. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the cop had pulled us over. We always get pulled over in Texas. Always Texas. So when he came out, he's like, what are you guys, a band or something? And I was like, let me deal with this, you know? And I was like, yeah, man, we're a band. He's like, what do you guys do? I go, uh, we sing for the Lord. And he's like, he's like, oh, yeah. I go, yeah, we're a Christian rap band. We do rap for, <laughs> for Christ, you know? Holy he hip was hop. Like, really? All right, boys, that's amazing. It's like, you know, and he let you go. let you guys go this time. He let us go. Of I course. think love the Lord though. Just I want to put that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. But it's just a great, that's a good, a no, great getaway. I'm is, sorry, Lord. I had to use you for that that moment. That's a genius, <laughs> is what that is. I was Any with of Quell, so it made sense, you know. Quell yeah. was a super Christian, so it yeah. made sense at the time. Yeah, that's funny. I, yeah, he mentioned that. So, yeah, that made me laugh. Yeah, Otherwise, he would have popped on here with a question for you, but there was no social media. You don't really have a, a, any social media I got an posts. Instagram. And that's about it. I don't really yeah. have social media, man. It, it, I don't like it that much, to be honest. I like yeah, it's it. a, a dirty place. I just like learning shit, and I just feel like it's uh, – I mean – Man, I just get bummed out when I scroll through social media. Oh, I think um, I, I, I think everybody does. I think yeah. they're finally figuring out that it's not real. People aren't posting real things, and it's bumming everybody out. Yeah, are, are you handy? Am I what? Like, are, you, are you handy, like with like uh, like building and stuff? Kind of. I mean, I can fix anything pretty much. My dad was a master carpenter and, and a mechanic, so yeah, I can do. Some stuff, not like he can do, but yeah, I'm handy. Yeah, I was just saying because I I, I I ended up getting a TikTok account, and all I wa- the only things I watch on there are people's little uh, building hacks and knot tying. There's a guy that does like all these fucking really cool knots, and I I, I don't know, I eat that shit up. I went on a wormhole love- with knots because I'm a fisherman <laughs> too, so I like have knots, or I'm always thinking about knots. Oh, oh, oh I'm telling you, man, the- scares me, man. The whole Chinese. Uh, Oh, sure. Yeah, of course. Your information kind of scares me. 
log in with someone else's, but then then check them out because I'll just there's some knots that I never even heard of that this dude's doing, and I'm and I and some I wild I, ones out there, bro. Yeah, I fucking love it. It's, it's so cool. They're all on Instagram Reels now, though. That's true. That's I got true. my son's like uh, thick pieces of rope from Home Depot. And we just got in a knot tying frenzy, like all three of my sons tying knots together and learning all these sick knots. Wow, that's uh, really cool. That is cool. Journeyman lineman, and he knows knots for days, you know. So he works on the power poles. He's always teaching us some new knots. Yeah, that's cool. That's something too that, that the kids end up going like remembering, like tying knots. Oh, with that, that is cool. Yeah. I know. I used cool. to. Yeah. I used to steal. Well. He gave it to me. My one of my brothers was a Cub Scout, you know, and they he gave me the Cub Scout book because I I would sit there at those meetings in the back of the room because girls just, weren't allowed. I just wanted to be a Boy Scout so bad. You but can't I, know. Yeah, well, no, I think I'm a little over the age <laughs> of that. Yeah, I, mean, I would suggest against it, but you're more than welcome now. <laughs> but I just studied, and I would just I the the diagrams of the knots and I try to wrap my brain around like how you would actually do that. Cause I didn't have rope. <laughs> but I would just study that, but I just remember studying the knots, but I, I, I hard, do that. they, they, get they are. I, I watch the videos and I still, I, I'll watch it and I'll slow <laughs> it down and I still can't. I'm like, how the fuck is he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to pause every second. Tee, tee, tee. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I like it. Hey, is there is there good is there a is there a part two barbecue? Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I actually just found a bunch of CDs from twenty years ago with meaty beats all over it, and uh, yeah, I have a ton of songs with meaty that I just never released. I got a lot of songs I haven't released. I'm ah, just kind of like uh, in the moment kind of thing for me for releasing. Sure. I was, I was gonna say when you released barbecue one was there always an intent of there being a a two or did you already have the two? Uh, i did that in like a day or two that record ah. was like a day or two record and then uh i sent it to meaty and he was like oh i hate the way it sounds so i remixed it and then dropped it you know and then for some reason it like a lot of people dig dug it you know but it, that was yeah. the intention the intention was just like personally it makes me happy putting music out so yeah. i I put it out when I need to feel happy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, th I think I read an interview maybe or something. I don't remember where I heard it from, but someone was saying that that was kind of how you ended up hooking up with Controller 7. Like he was, or was that with Meaty? Like you put Yeah, well, out. Controller 7 had hit me up to do a song. We did one song, same thing with like the Heavy 12s. And he was like, you want to do a record? I was like, yeah, I'm down. I'm super busy because I got kids and I work and shit. So he was like uh well i have this record kind of set out i already made all the beats and it's already in kind of like movie form so i'm gonna pass this off to you and see what you do and i did it and maybe one beat i didn't like out of all the beats he sent me so he redid the drums to him and then yeah that was it then couch came to fruition and now control seven's fucking crushing it man yeah absolutely right i'm proud of him I can't, 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 can't think of anything that he ever puts out that's, like, uh, not good. Yeah. yeah, he's always doing good shit. He's so good, man. <laughs> what, what, hey, were you a rebel growing up? A rebel? Like, uh... Yeah. Not just, like, did rebellious, like, kind of had that rebellious attitude or... Kind of. Or I mean, I come from a long lineage of dysfunction, man, and... and... My grandma was a gangster, my dad was a gangster, and naturally, you know, I fell into that shit too. So Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't like this. I hey, I grew up not liking the government and my dad taught me all about conspiracy and I didn't like cops growing up and yeah, I, I did a lot of dirt. Yeah, but, but then yeah. I became a stand up citizen and a good dad and husband yeah. also. Moved to St. Pete. Yeah. Moved well, to St. Pete for I'm rebellious. I, you know, I'm rebellious to shit that I see that's uh, not right in the world. Yeah. If you're not being a good, compassionate human and you're being mean to people or you, your intentions are greedy or whatever, yeah, I'm against that shit. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what What was your What was your best subject in school? Uh, social studies, for sure. Oh. Oh. Yeah, world history and social studies. I love reading about the world. Yeah, what do you think that what do you are you able to pinpoint like what what it was about it that you 
Yeah, the, I'm, I'm pretty the multicultural, man. My my family on my dad's side is from the Philippines, and my mom's side is from Sicily. Whoa. We're gonna have some Native American family, and I grew up with a lot of black homies and Mexican homies. So I I just like learning about people's culture, you know. Well, that and so <laughs> the uh, mestizo nomenclature is perfect for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm mestizo all the way. Like, it, yeah, if I wasn't doing music. That's still that's me, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you rather have a conversation about life with Mini Me or with Mini Driver? <laughs> I, I love Mini Driver's hair, man. I think I would. I'd fuck with Mini Driver. <laughs> 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 I've heard her name in years. Bro. I know. Well, me and my son just watched her in a movie. She was it was really adorable. She was really adorable. Yeah, she's actually. cool. She looks like she's just a huggable person, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the last time I think I saw her was like um, in the the movie with uh, Matt Damon and, and Ben Affleck. Uh, yeah, she's that. tight, man. I like Minnie Drive. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, and she's got an accent too, right? She's from England. Yeah, she, yeah. I love. Yeah. I'm at my English homie's house. I'm we're at, at like a family party. He's from West London, and he's like, "Yo, uh, use my room to do this interview." I was like, "Cool, yeah." And I, I only yeah. I I watch all British television, man. I love an English accent. <laughs> Um, if you could upload the knowledge or memories from any living being, past or present, whose would you choose? You upload it right to your own. Um, yeah, that's a hard question. Yeah. I don't know if I'd <laughs> want to see this one, but like my favorite human being in the world, favorite rapper in the world is Mac Dre. So for me, oh. Mac Dre would be... I'd love to get in his head, man. He's such a happy dude. And I'm from the Bay. So he, he changed the Bay in such a positive way, man. It was insane. Um, but I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of like strip club nights in there that I don't need to see. But he probably has some good memories, you know? Yeah, I guess the downside of that is you will have to go through all of the memories. So you oh, are going to have to see yeah, some of them. Mac Dre for sure, man. Rest in peace, Mac Dre. Yeah, cool. Um all right, here we go. This one's fucking crazy. I thought you were gonna go with like Gandhi or some like <laughs> like somebody. No, no, I don't need any wisdom, man. I, I read really <laughs> shit. <laughs> wisdom sometimes, well, wisdom like that also leads to heaps of pain. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Michael Rappaport's character Remy from Higher Learning or a <laughs> Remy, or a Remy Martin. I don't know which one you go with. I don't know. I've never drank a Remy Martin. I don't, oh, a drink? Yeah, that con, it's a cognac, but I don't. I've, I've never had drink it, it a lot. Yeah, I've had Remy a lot. Um, honestly, man, I love Higher Learning. I would watch. Uh, I'd go with uh, Remy from Higher Learning. Here's a funny story: is uh, I was I watched American History X with all my homies and their family from East Oakland, all black people watching <laughs> American Damn. History X. With me, I brought it over because I worked at Blockbuster at the time. And it was like my family, you know, we all grew up together. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you guys want to watch this movie? I had never saw American History. Oh, X. shit. And we watched it together. And I was like, what y'all think of oh. that movie? Man, they were like, that movie was crazy. That was a tight movie. I was like, shit, I was sweating balls. Like, are you guys all right with this movie? Yeah, because that, I mean, that one, that comes out real gnarly right off that the movie bat. Right nuts, off the first, man. man. Yeah. I think, but, but you know, my my the homeboy's mom, who was like my mom, she was like, I actually, that movie was pretty prolific. It was nice to see the change in that young man. You know, it's like, yeah. But yeah. That I was, mean, that's, I, why, that's why, you know, those things, that's why, yeah, I, you can, they definitely get by with like uh, showing shit like that because it goes in the, you know, it ends up in the good. It ends up in a good place. Yeah, is that is, bro, Michael Rappaport, he's kind of annoying now. <laughs> he's out there making a lot of noise. I, I, he gets, he gets a kick out of it, but I don't know. He gets, a, it's a little much now. <laughs> it's too much. He used to come into a shop. I worked at this place called Turntable Lab in, in L.A. And uh, he used to come in and buy nothing but tribe mixes. Always bought. He yeah. loves tribe. Yeah. And he'd be annoying as fuck about it. Like, hey, man, you got any tribe? Like, every single day, I'd be like, no, Mike, I don't have a tribe. <laughs> yeah, you know what I love? What I always liked about him uh, was his, uh, like, his genuine love for, for hip hop and, yeah. and the culture. Like, that's what I always loved about it. He was good in uh, Zebrahead. You ever see yeah. Zebrahead? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, really, I was a big fan of him. I loved him. I loved him in Higher Learning. That and that. <laughs> it was dope. Yeah, Remy was a <laughs> sick character. Yeah. He was like the weak ass dude. <laughs> he gave his ass beat, and then it like pushed him to be that way. That's the Buster Rhymes I love. The skinny Buster yeah. Rhymes with the dreads. Yeah, he was dope in that too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, skinny bust. That's funny. <laughs> did he get? He's, did I mean, he he's, old, he's older and he's puffed up a little. <laughs> uh, all right. Who, what about this? Who would you rather collaborate with, the B-52s or Be Real? Oh, Be Real all the way. Be Real is one of my favorite rappers of all time. Is he? Uh, was he one of? Was he someone like when you were growing up that was out that you were like, that's fucking, that's the kind of, that's the kind of music. Yeah, I'll absolutely. Work. Because I loved East Coast rap so much, but I was on the West Coast and I loved West Coast rap so much. He had him and Mux and Sin, they had that sound, man. It was like the perfect marriage between East Coast and West Coast hip hop. And also, I grew up with a lot of Mexican and Chicano foods, you know, so like that sound embodied that time and that time period in our neighborhood. So it's, I love Cypress Hill to death. There's some of my, Favorite, favorite artist of all time. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and they really did like that was the sound. Like be like the Cypress Hill was the sound. And you hear and even like sometimes when it comes on, like when we're listening to it, like you just I immediately feel back to old gangbanging days. Like just I get this feeling this yeah, like yeah. feeling. It's a it's, is still on it too, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking cool. Um, all right, what about this? Besides a person, what's something you couldn't live without? Like, not like you know, obviously your children and your family and stuff, but like, what's something you couldn't live without? I mean, air, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> something I couldn't live without music for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, yeah. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me, like, where it takes me in the public eye. Like, for me, music is really therapeutic and it's always been that way. It's, it's been my, like, crutch throughout life so music for sure yeah you can lean on it for just about anything and then it can take you almost anywhere yeah any art you know it's an art <laughs> so art for sure i mean i could you could take music out of my hands and i'll pick up a camera you know what i mean yeah. or i'll pick up a paintbrush or a pen it's yeah art without art we'd, we'd just be a bunch of primates throwing feces at each other yeah bro <laughs> <laughs> um who uh, what what use do you is there a useless facts that you, or a useless fact that you have that you you like to share a lot to, as a flex? Yeah, I probably have a ton of those, man. I'm just trying <laughs> to think of it because there's probably too many to name. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, well, I, mean, I can't I think, think of it off the top of my head for sure. Yeah, I have a hard one. Do you know one that I try to do a lot, Adrian? Oh, By chance? I don't, oh no, I have one. I just What's learned. Yours? I just learned that honeybees are not native to the U.S. Oh, there was never a honey. Bee. Are they Africanized? No, they there are native Africanized bees, but they're from Europe. The honeybee. Oh, so every honeybee you see, all the honey, that's that that's all boxed up. That's interesting. There yeah. you go. You flex, dude. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> who's who's a better listen, Faith Hill or Faith No More? Oh, Faith No More for sure, bro. Faith Hill, like, get the fuck out of here, Faith Hill. <laughs> you never know. Like I, sometimes, like uh, someone like Love and Country, and I, and I, that uh, someone I wouldn't imagine. People are loving Country now, man. I got, it's weird. I got an Afghani homie that's like a raver. That he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to Luke Combs concert." I was like, "Who the fuck is Luke Combs?" They're like Country guy. I'm in the country now. I'm like, "Oh really? All right." What did you do? I don't know what it. I'm wondering what it is. Yeah, our Uber driver picked us up and uh, down in Kentucky. Well, I guess it, we were in Kentucky, but still, he was. He like, just didn't fit the profile. No, of the he was bumping country, and I was like, "Did was this in my in my profile? Uh, pro, profile? Like I like country. Dude, there's some country art. It's country is taking on the big. It's so many faces, man. Latino, black, all of it, man. Everybody's starting to do country now. But yeah, there's a lot of money in country too. People are starting to realize there's a lot of money in making country music. Yeah, because yeah, it's a genre that country listeners are are very dedicated to. Right. Did you? Hey, you lived in Philly. Did you ever? We saw that movie a couple of years ago about the um, black cowboys in Philly. Did you? Were you ever? 
I did, did see ever, that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever witness that when you were there? I never witnessed it. In Philly, I just witnessed a bunch of stabbing, shootings. Um, oh, no. Yeah, shit. <laughs> the normal Philly shit. That is wild. That 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 is just wild now too. Like when the news covers shit, like even like sports events and everything going down in Philly, like it's just a laugh. Like everyone knows. Like oh, bro, it's Philly. That's why we got. I, I got my kids, man. I was like, they're Philly boys for sure. But uh, are they? I didn't want them having to be in that situation growing up, man. Those kids grow apart up there. You know? They do. Yeah, yeah. And that's what. And like when a sports team wins, man, they let it all loose. Win. Like they, That's the key yeah. word. When they lose, sure. nothing happens. When they win, the town is destroyed. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was yeah. either way. Yeah. yeah they, no they words. Like to, yeah. Well, when you're living, when heart, when life, life's hard, man, you'll celebrate just about anything. That, cool. that that guy uh, is weird. Who? Their emblem guy. Their their mascot. The Philly. Oh, yeah, I don't know what it is. What is I don't even know what what is that I thing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Have you seen the, the, the hockey mascot? No. Yeah. He, uh, what, it's a, his the, name's the, Gritty. He just looks like a, a fucking uh, parasite. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, maybe that's what, maybe who I'm thinking of. Yeah, who are you talking about, Gritty? Or don't, is there other one? Do they have another one that's yeah, like the that? Philly's guy looks like a. Uh, I don't know, a Fraggle Rock or something? Like the dude. Yeah, okay, so he's the orange weird. one. Yeah, no, this both... one, that one's gritty. The yeah. orange one. Gritty's oh. orange. The other guy's, uh, Philly's guy is green. Oh, no, yeah, that one is weird too. Yeah, they're it's all... like a, he's got a horn nose. <laughs> a honker. Yeah. What is this? A honker. <laughs> it's, like a... it's very creative. <laughs> I guess uh, Mr. Rogers from was from there, so maybe it's something to do. <laughs> no, I don't think it has anything to do with Mr. Rogers. Wait, Mr. Rogers was from Philly? Oh, no, not Philly. What's the one with the bridges? Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes Pittsburgh. sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what's what's more of a, uh, well, I guess you got younger now, but for a Halloween movie night, Corpse Bride or Children of the Corn? Oh, that's a good one. I mean, for me, no, yeah, probably still Corpse Bride. I love Tim mm-hmm. Burton, man. Tim Burton's Oh, a- yeah. Nightmare on, Nightmare on Christmas was uh, one of my favorite, favorite movies. Still is to this day. It's really good. Yeah, it's that there. Jack's such a great character. And, uh, oh, yeah. amazing. 30-year anniversary. I know right? every damn song from that movie. I, say, I can sing it, like, too. Did, <laughs> did you like, um, well, I know he's kind of uh, in hot water these days, but did you like uh, Marilyn Manson's version of that? Um, of uh, Never heard it. No. It was pretty good, I was a big Marilyn Manson guy. I just wasn't into it. No, no I, I wasn't either, but it was a, just a cool mix of, it was like it's real gritty. It tripped me out to see that him and uh, Johnny Depp and Cage all work together. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Cage, uh, you know Cage. Cage, Cage the yeah. rapper. Cage, yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard that I name did, in a while. I know. I ha- I I hadn't heard in a while because I used to listen to him quite a bit. And then I um I'm, I I text a lot with uh, this producer Alexander Brown. I don't know if you know him, but yeah, that's he, the dude that works with the uh, Cavs, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, he did an album. He recorded a whole bunch of stuff with Cage. He sent me some, but it never came out because Cage wanted to do a like go darker. And that, that's exactly what he was saying. He was like, "Yeah, he started doing stuff with Marilyn, and he wanted to go darker." And it's because he's hanging out with Shia LaBeouf a lot. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. And mm-hmm. He was he was mixing up. <laughs> Cage's stuff was already pretty dark. I know. That's what Alexander yeah. Brown was saying. He's like, yeah, yeah it's going to go darker. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Wow. Do you, do you have any grand ideas that you've yet to implement? Uh, well, as a grown man, real estate is my grand idea. Mm. You know? Yeah. Getting into real estate is a grand idea. Yeah. I should have um, done it long ago, man. If I would have bought a house in San Francisco a long time ago, I would have been rich right now, you know? Yeah. What, 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 how does that work? How does that, where are these people, why do these people always, you know, there's always those people that were always like fucking right at the right time or some shit. I don't know, man, because when you're creative, you're always wrong at the wrong time. No. <laughs> so you're, I, ahead, no, you're ahead of the time. That uh, Everything I did. You're like, ahead of the time. 
Yeah, my very first feature film I shot on Hi8 video long before anyone was shooting feature films on video. And so Sundance passed on it, but then four years later, all these fucking movies were being submitted on video. And I was just, yeah, that's happened to me my whole life, being ahead of shit. So that's what happens to artists. You I like to shoot that. video? Uh, so I shot, I've shot five feature films, I've, but, I, but I, my art career took off and so it was fun. It's, and I'll, I'll, I'll go back, back into it after I'm done with this part of my career. But yeah, no, it was, that's a, I always loved movies, man. And Zach from uh, Hands Made, from our record label, from Alpha record label, he's a feature film kind of guy, man. He's a, he's a film, film head. Yeah, because they're tech, Hands Made's technically like a, a, a partner to, to our show, the DOD that's 45. Right. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. We don't, we don't like, um, we don't take money or anything from anyone because this whole show is just for the pa- the love of music, right? And the love of drawing. So that's the only reason we do it. But we like to just shout out, you know, people. It's a that great work. concept, man. You guys so, are doing awesome. Ah, uh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was. That's why I was. I I text with um uh, with at uh, with Dose just every once in a while because I literally two days ago I texted him. I was watching our episode with uh, Buddy Peace, and Buddy Peace was talking about how he first met themselves. And I was and I was just sitting there listening. And I was like, "Yeah, fucking dose is so dope." And I had to text him. I was like, "Man, I'm sorry to just text you out of the blue, but I just have to tell you, your music is fantastic." So I love that. Yeah, man. You guys, yeah, I know it sounds so ass kissy, but you guys fucking really make great music together. You sound. It's not, it's not ass kissy, man, because we we're blown away by it too. Like, what the fuck? How does this work so well together? Because we did one song and then it turned into Alpha. Which is how it always works. One song. What was the What was the first song? What was the song that you guys did? It was a song on one of my EPs called Overlord, and the song was called Turning Tables. Watch us exercise the index and squeeze until it bleeds, until it bleeds in my knee. It kills all for life. I N E M P T Y I T R U S T. I live off whatever there is where it's deep. Ain't no heartbeat, the teeth part I won't be. But I'd rather starve some than low hung insect infected through feast with the sick feeders. Weak tweet. And Vice Magazine posted it, and it got popped. And, uh, and that was the first song you and Dose ever recorded together. Never, no, that was our first first track. Yeah, I've known Dose since I was fifteen. So, yeah, I, I I had read that you guys had friends with other people, but you didn't even meet each other through <laughs> through the, the, yeah. the, those. Yeah, it was a long time. I was used to battle a lot when I was a kid. So he played a show that I was battling at, and then I met him in jail. And yeah, we just kept in touch from there. You know, I ended up in Chicago and in all these other places. But yeah, Dose yeah. Is, uh, he's he's one of a kind, man. He's 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 one of a kind, and I don't think he gets the flowers he deserves. He's he's a big part of why our scene and the underground scene is what it is. You know, and and he never gets the credit he deserves from the people he put on. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that. A lot of people wouldn't be where they're at if it wasn't for him, you know? Yeah. I got that dude back. Did you just say you met him and jail? Yeah, yeah. Or in jail? <laughs> no, not in jail. I don't, those probably oh, okay. in jail time, but I didn't meet him. You want to know what's jail. funny? Adrian's so much better at that because I also thought you said I met him in jail. But I, um, I, anytime anyone says says anything about it, I don't, it's none, it's never my business why they were oh, behind I, the box. <laughs> I just move, I just let it go. <laughs> but that does make sense. Him and Jill. <laughs> you know, those has a pretty crazy history in the past, so it, it would have been possible back in the day. That's why I was like, I was like, hey, yeah. I guess they met in jail. Whatever. I definitely, I definitely went to jail a few times around that time, but no, I didn't. I didn't meet him in jail. But well, him and Jell as them, they were yeah. Yeah. No, they were them. It was when Jell was pounding away on the SP at show. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I was gonna say, I think what, why my, my personal opinion, the way you, what is so great with you two together is, there's a similarity between your vocals, but there's, but there's also not. They're, yeah. they're, they're on different ends of the spectrum, so they really fucking elevate each other. And they highlight each other, and yeah. it's, it's fucking really good. So it's anyway. a beautiful compliment. I feel like those are so out there, and I, I feel like I don't know, man. I've been fighting my whole life to be normal, so it's like there's a good duality and contrast there between us, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, do you have any weird collections? 
Uh, I just have collections of clothes, man. Weird collection oh. of old man clothes. So I buy old people clothes. So mm. all the clothes that you can't get that aren't made quality anymore, I try and buy clothes from like the 40s and 50s. Oh, wow. Because they're still made with quality, you know? And you can get them for like three bucks at a thrift store, you know? Yeah, so you're, you're our secondhand store getting oh. them? Yeah. Secondhand store guy, but I don't flip. I'm not like a vintage collector. I just, yeah, yeah. I appreciate old quality things. Well, you were in the right place. Because, have you checked out any estate sales down there? No, because but I'm going to. That's yeah. where you need to get your 30s and 40s yeah. clothes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I love the woods and the leathers from that era. So they just, we don't make good shit anymore. It's all no. mass, mass no. production. It's, it's made to fail. Yeah. yeah. That's why we yeah. bought out here. I love old homes. I love yeah. they built old homes. They, yeah, they built them to last generations. Yeah. They, 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 uh, weren't, uh, they weren't building to make money. It wasn't yeah. like... Once you throw money to into the equation, it dilutes all the authenticity of everything and the purpose yep. and, and the heart in it. So, Absolutely. And if you ever question whether that house was built for love, just look at the back side of the architecture. Like right. stand back and look at the, the back of your house architecture because it's probably all on the front, the good stuff. Yeah. The back is just good. kind of like, eh. That's a good observation. Do you think you'd fit better in the Marine Corps or a hardcore band? <laughs> that's a good question man i get kind of annoyed at hardcore shows now i used to like them man but uh i don't know dude i probably don't like marines either in the marine corps because a lot of them guys are like jarhead jocks I'd be better in a hardcore band for sure man <laughs> I, don't, don't get me wrong i respect the marines i respect sure sure them. yeah yeah <laughs> Thank we're not putting that out there yeah yeah but yeah, as you, me personally i'd fit in better in a hardcore band maybe if it was a straight edge hardcore band i'd do better in that I'll be <laughs> in uh hey do you believe in ghosts yes i believe in have you, i believe in the spirit world yeah oh have you had an encounter with like a ghost ever yeah, yeah absolutely uh, yeah yeah uh my brother came to stay with me in Phoenix when I was 15. We had left the Bay Area, and he said he sold his soul to the devil, and he he injected heroin into his balls in a forest. And so the devil sent a, along this uh, spirit with him to follow him around to make sure he was staying in line or whatever. And he told me this story. Long story short, he left my place that we were staying at with my pops, and uh, I kept seeing this little spirit peek around the corner while I'd be watching TV late at night because I stayed up late. And see, hear these footsteps and shit. And I came home one night from a party I had played this big. I used to play raves, like drum and ba bass raves when I was 15. I'd MC all these parties. Wow. And I was laying down in my bed and I hear these footsteps coming closer to my hot, closer to my room. Doom, doom, doom. And I was like, what the fuck? So I turn on my radio and I was like, I don't want to hear that shit. Turn on my radio. And the first thing I heard was like, you're going to die. So I fucking shut it off real quick. And then I turned my TV on to kind of drown that noise out. And then the first thing I saw was like a dude getting stabbed. And I turned that off. So I heard it going closer, 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 closer. And then I called my pops out. And I was like, Pops, wake up. And he came through and I was like, dude, there's a fucking spirit coming in the house. My dad's really spiritual too. Mm -hmm. And so he said this prayer to St. Michael. And he's not Catholic or anything, but he said a prayer to St. Michael and called him out to get rid of the spirit. And spirit was gone after that, man. I never saw him again. Damn. Yeah. It was wild. Man. Yeah. I, that, that, I, I hear people's encounters and stories all, all the time. And I don't doubt that they're true. I'm, I've always been a doubter, but I've heard so many from people. I'm, I, I guess I'm not a doubter. I'm, I'm, I just haven't had my own. Actually, I have had my own experiences, and I still go, nah, that wasn't, <laughs> wasn't that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, do I believe in it. I don't believe yeah. it's very powerful. That's sure. I, I don't I believe, like, the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. But I, it just does it's not powerful to me. They're not in the flesh, so... Yeah, maybe that's what mine is because I've never been scared of. I'm like, I'm not scared of it. You should. But I, but I, yeah, maybe that's what my, I should say now. Maybe it's. I like that. Yeah, it's a. Uh, 
It's not that I don't believe it. I just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid of it or something. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, like a cup flying off of a uh, cabinet. It's like, okay. Uh, you just yeah. broke the cup in my house. What the fuck? Yeah. I got <laughs> no, I got to clean that. that every day. <laughs> big deal. Yeah. Yeah, big deal. <laughs> Is there anything that really annoys you? Oh, uh, fucking inconsiderate drivers, man. Oh. People driving on the highway and inconsiderate. People in Florida drive. And people in Florida will be like, well, they don't fucking move to Florida. But Florida drivers fucking drive. They're pretty fast, bro. You try to merge. You know, you're supposed to let oncoming traffic merge. They won't let you merge. They'll stay neck and neck with you. Boom, boom, boom. And they won't let you come on. So you have to slow down and get on. That shit drives me they, nuts. They won't make eye contact when you oh, do yeah. that. Like... Inconsiderate drivers are like my pet pee. You know? You didn't yeah. put a fucking signal on. There was this movie with, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He was from in Children of Men. And he did this movie where a guy cut him off and he was eating a carrot. And he fucking bit the carrot off, and then he threw it at the driver, and it stuck in the driver's eye, and it killed him. I was like, <laughs> oh, dang, I wish I could do that sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, that's a good one. Yeah, because that is annoying. People, Yeah, and then fucking not realizing the merge system works if you do it correctly. Yeah. There shouldn't be traffic. It's like you're being a dick for no reason. You could slow down a little bit. You know what I'm coming yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that answer. Would you rather be locked in an escape room with Kanye or Kid Rock? Oh, Kanye for sure. He's way more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there would be a lot more to get, to, to get out of that. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other question I like to ask before I go into the dish is, um, what would uh, twenty? What advice would twenty twenty three Steez give uh, two thousand Steez? Don't drink a bunch while you're doing music and making music and and you know cherish your opportunities you know that's they good solid back. advice well let me ask you this though the, usually my follow-up to that is would 2000 uh steez listen to 2023 <laughs> yeah way more impressed by 2023 steez for sure bro <laughs> absolutely <laughs> i didn't devolve you know i wasn't yeah. with those guys <laughs> All right, all right, okay, we'll get into the dish. We're going to serve the dish. There's our first worsts and favorites. <laughs> what was your first paying job? Uh, fucking selling newspapers when I was eight. At like a newspaper stand or delivering them? Handing outside the liquor store, selling newspapers oh, for nice. My mom made me get a job. She was like, oh. you need to work, man. I was like, fuck, I'm eight years old. I don't want to stand on the fucking corner selling papers. Eight years old, that's, yeah, that's... That's yeah. our youngest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is our youngest first pay, first job on this. Yeah, that's crazy. Fucking old, uh, man. My parents want me to work. Yeah, get you. You got to start bringing in the income. Wow, your, son, right? you can talk. your son, your son's nine. You yeah. have one son. Yeah, does he have a job yet? No, yeah, he works, dude. He hustles. He goes to the beach oh, and good. he'll sing with his fucking like oh, a bucket, oh. and he'll make people tip him, and he makes tons of money doing it. Oh, that's there dope. And but he did that on his own, right? Right? Like that. Yeah, was yeah. He's a hustler, to... man. He just wants to make money. Yeah, that's good. That's a different kind of uh, different kind of gig when you're like, I want to go do this. I want to go make the money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your first curse word? Oh, fuck, for sure. Fuck. <laughs> Still in my vocabulary. My whole family said it. It's a good word, man. Good word, yeah. When was your first time on stage? Uh, YMCA when I was 10 years old. We got sent to the YMCA after the 89 earthquake in San Francisco. Oh, uh, we did like a little performance. So yeah, I was ten years old on stage. Were you rapping? No, it was like a comedy show type of thing. It was me mm -hmm. and a bunch of kids from around the Bay Area. We did like a comedy sketch together. Are you funny? Not really, man. I mean, like I can be funny in conversation, but I'm not like my comedic timing's pretty off. I can oh. be like, oh, dude, he's fucking lame. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm quick. I'm very smart with and wise, but funny. Oh, I leave that to the funny people, you know. Yeah. What was your first pet? German Shepherd. 
Mm. Oh, I do like that breed. When was the first time you got grounded, if you ever did? I got grounded every day, man. I was grounded my whole young life. Did you, what was the, like the longest term you had to serve as being grounded? Do you remember? I was with my mom up until the time I was like 14 and then I was out of the house and that was, I was probably grounded the whole 14 years. <laughs> the whole 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first car? 88 Civic, Honda Civic, drop, lower. I ah, was it, it? A, a week later, I got T-bone smashed. Oh, shit, yeah. you had it for a that week? That was my first car, yeah, after a week. Oh, and then I went to buy another car, and I got hit taking it off of the lot. Yeah. Oh, shit. It was a, it was a Regal, an uh, 89 Buick Regal with, with Dayton's on it. Oh, shit. You kept them Dayton's, though. <laughs> nah, that shit went rolling down the street. <laughs> Time to sell more papers. That's right. So oh, cool. sell more papers. Yeah, yeah. Well, who was your first celebrity crush? Oh, uh, Winona Ryder. From uh, what movie? Heathers. Heathers. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Oh, I still oh, love Winona Ryder. Awesome. Yeah. 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 She. And it's good to see her having a her having a come up again, huh? Yeah. I cool. love her still to this day. Yeah. Favorite type of woman right there. Pale and black hair. Yeah. And she, <laughs> yeah. She really brought it in Beetlejuice. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and then, have you ever seen Amelie? Yes. Mm -mm. Of her too. I love yeah, her. that that actress, oh. the French actress. That is your type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my type. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a cool movie too. That Amelie, it's a beautiful picture. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. What was the first concert you went to? BB uh, King and John Lee Hooker and Stevie oh, Ray Vaughan. Wow. Whoa, you saw SRV then? Um, well, no wonder why you love the blues. If that was like one of your first, that had an impact. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Where was that at? And who took you? Uh, Concord Pavilion. My parents had just got divorced, and I think I was like six. I was trying to get them back together, so I was like, let's go see these guys in concert. You know, so we all went together, and it didn't work out that way. But uh, you know. Well, yeah, sad blues songs sometimes aren't going to get people back together. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> yeah. But John Hooker <laughs> was amazing. B.B. King was amazing, and Stevie Ray Vaughan was amazing. It was right before he died, too. Oh, that's awesome, because, yeah, that's something. Well, yeah, that, that's yeah, so man. sweet, That is though. sweet, yeah. I can just see you, little you. <laughs> you probably got grounded for that one. Uh, I got yelled at for sure. I look like my dad, so my mom probably like fucking just like, get in your fucking room. I don't want to see your face. <laughs> All right, let's go to these worsts. What was the worst meal you ever had? Oh, that's hard, man. <laughs> 12 from Typical Cats made me dinner one night in Chicago when we lived together. And he and it was a, he was like, you got to try this fish out. <laughs> <laughs> it was the saltiest piece of fucking fish I ever ate in my life. It was the worst meal I've ever had. Did you tell him that? <laughs> oh, yeah. We still laugh about it. It was bad. No, oh, that's good. Yeah, you every once in a while you ought to send him uh yeah, send him a little a, a, like a little cod in a box or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was bad. I sent him some salt. What's the worst musical instrument? Oh man, that's hard because I like, even if it sounds bad, I feel like there's a place for it in music, you know? Uh, okay. Worst musical instrument. Right. What do you think? I, I say a fucking flute. Recorder. Yeah, the recorder. Record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flute, most definitely. The, the recorder, the one they give you in school to start learning. <laughs> it just makes me think of uh, Anchorman when he's like playing the flute. Go. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, he plays it. Yeah, he plays it full on like Jethro Tull style. <laughs> <laughs> Jethro Tull. <laughs> What's the worst smell? Sewage for sure. Sewage. Oh yeah. Bad. What's the worst condiment? Shit, that's a bad one for me too, man. Because I like all different flavors. Uh. Are you a are you a, a hot dog like hot dog I'm type? Sure of hot dogs, yeah. Are you are you what someone who's very much against ketchup being on a hot dog? Oh, I love ketchup. No, no. Oh. Good ketchup. Uh, what about mayonnaise on your hot dog? You know, worst condiment, Miracle Whip. I hate. Oh, Miracle Whip's awful. It's got that tangy mayonnaise. Flavor. Who the fuck wants to eat sweet mayonnaise? This shit's nasty. Oh yeah, it's shit. <laughs> Gross. Yes. You found it. it. You knew that. You knew there was one. Yeah, yeah. My shit. mom used to get that shit, and I'd be like, "Ugh, why'd you get this?" 
Just get real with them. Did it come with? Yeah, Miracle Whip was so big back in the day. Like everyone big. always bought Miracle Whip. It was huge. Yeah. We were raised on it. Yeah, and then. I, I think I didn't have real mayonnaise until I met you. Uh, yeah, because my mom bought that best foods. She loved that best foods mayonnaise. You, but... you say uh, you say mayonnaise like my mom says it mayonnaise. Oh, mayonnaise. I say yeah. mayonnaise with an N. <laughs> mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> mayonnaise. Yeah, it is a weird sound. <laughs> I've been called out on that before. It's like cran and crown. He says cran. Cran. Yeah, cran. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I've been called out for that on the, the podcast before, too, haven't I, Adrian? Oh, I'm saying, really? Yeah, Cran. I say <laughs> Cran, <are> too. <laughs> Rayo. Uh, what's the worst hairstyle you ever had? Oh, man, I don't know if there is one, man. I've had all good hairstyles. Oh, I lucky just, you. <laughs> I had uh, I had the Mongolian back in the day when I was a kid. The, the I mean, thing I was in the back, a, right? a Filipino game. We had just this here with a oh. long braided. The yeah, that's thing. a good look, though. That's yeah. scary looking, too. <laughs> it was a bad haircut, bro. Now I think about it, it's like a, a yarmulke with a tail on it. You know what I mean? With a tail on yeah, it. I see that um, Hari <laughs> Krishnas do that a lot. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks cool on some people. It looked bad on me. What's the worst kid's toy? Uh, fuck, man. That's a hard one. I can't think of it off the top of my head. What do you think? I think... It's a, a really good toy, but also a horrible toy, Legos. Why is it horrible? Because you step on them, you vacuum them up, you m- lose one piece, and it's the end of the world if your kids are a certain age. Oh, right yeah. now, for me, it's that, that rubber chicken that makes a honking noise. Oh, awful <laughs> toy. That's not all day. You go, da, da, da. That drives yeah. yeah. The toys that made the constant noise, uh, I fucking hated. I, I hey. was fine with those. Oh, I, like I knew where my kids were. Oh, so you could always hear them. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's actually good. That's a good way to look at it. That's yeah. Expected. Yeah. What's the worst movie? I mean, I like some pretty bad movies, man. Like, Zoolander is one of my favorite movies. A lot of people hate it. Well, that's okay. You can you can say that because even even um, even Tumex said, uh, what was the movie, Adrian? Uh, the, uh, the Franken- zombie ho- Franken Hooker. It's his favorite movie. It's his favorite movie, but he's like, it's the, seriously the worst movie. <laughs> Franken Hooker's pretty bad, man. There's some bad ones out there. I was a bad movie fanatic, like B movies. You enjoyed them? Oh, I loved them. I love shitty movies. Troll 2 is probably the worst oh. movie in history. <laughs> you ever seen Troll 2? I know. <laughs> I don't think I saw Troll. I didn't have well, the desire I, to I see don't Troll think it's one. worse than Shamrock in the Hood. Oh, no, it's one's <laughs> called Lep. Leprechaun in the Hood? Yeah, Leprechaun in the Hood. Ice T's in that one. That's a good movie, man. I love that movie. Oh, it's so <laughs> shitty. I like <laughs> shitty movies. Yeah, that's true. That's If you like that one, you definitely like shitty movies. <laughs> yeah, I like <laughs> shitty movies. I, I don't know. Speaking man. of B-movies, there was one that I was thinking about watching again. I think it was called American Movie. Is that right? The guy with the vodka? Was that what that oh, was called? Oh, yeah, that's called uh, American Movie, the documentary. Yeah. Yeah, Have that's you a seen fucking that? great movie. I have it. I got to watch that, that again. I, yeah, it's I about a guy. It in 20 years. It's about a guy trying to make a horror movie, and he's like a sh- just the shittiest movie maker. But they're from Wisconsin, and they just, and it's, they're kind of dense. You should check it out. It's a really good movie. It's called American Movie. Um, all right, here we'll do the favorites, then we'll let you get out of here. Favorite TV sitcom dad? Uh, dude from Family Matters for sure. Oh, he was nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Carl. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has like jo- jolly. I like, love him, man. He's so yeah. good. It's fun to watch. He made you feel good. Favorite curse word. Or right, you know what's a good one? Horse shit. Horse shit. Horse yeah. shit. Word. Just Favorite the way you word. say it. That's oh. a good curse word. Horse. <laughs> shit. Horse. You almost have to say it with a <laughs> you with gotta a say it like accent. <laughs> <laughs> Horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> favorite place to vacation? Uh, I like going back home to California, man. It's my favorite place. See my family. Yeah, it's, that's, a, that's a good proper vacation yeah. when you can just hang yeah. around with the fam. Your favorite late night snack? Any kind of charcuterie, like, like uh, mm-hmm. salami, prosciutto, stuff like that. Oh, that's your late night snack. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Because you could just eat it, and it's meat. I like meat. Yeah, 
Mine's a fucking bowl of cereal. I can't stop. That's good. Yeah. Well, sugar keeps me up at night. That's why I don't like eating it. Oh. Yeah, that's you probably got it. You're probably on to a good one there. Yeah. Did you just have a couple pieces of yeah. the... Yeah. I mean, I'll eat the whole bag. Peroni or something. Oh. Like that's, what I, that's what I'll do with hummus, hummus and fucking Ritz crackers. Yeah. <laughs> Your favorite album right now? Shit. It's a hard one because I listen to so much music. Um, the Alpha record I listen to a lot for sure. Oh, good. Have you ever listened to Timber Timber? Timber Timber? No. Yeah, they're incredible, man. It's like ghostly gospel bluesy it's spelled timber timber oh yeah yes i do know them yeah hey, I'm, timber, i don't timber think i've really to dope man i like i randomly hit the dude up when he was in philly and um he got me into the show because the tickets were all sold out just a nice guy and their show was yeah, that's incredible, cool. man our favorite cereal uh fuck what's that graham crackers mm. golden grams golden grams that's a good cereal. Yeah, that one for sure. And, and right. uh, fruit, not fruity pebbles, but the chocolate one. Cocoa not pebbles. Cocoa pebbles. pebbles. Flintstone ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it oh. turns the milk chocolate milk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I was just I, when I said cocoa puffs, I forgot about those too. Those yeah. were I loved those because it did. Yeah, their milk in the bowl was just <laughs> not but chocolate milk. <laughs> it was the best. Your favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? <laughs> <laughs> Twins. With twins Dick is so Dino. good. It's twins. We just showed our kids twins recently. Yeah, that's a good movie. Did you know that they were doing a Twins three and um, it was it was going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito, and Eddie Murphy. But, uh, yeah, but Eddie Murphy wow. uh, ended up dropping out. So now it's Arnold, Danny, Danny DeVito, and Tracy Morgan. Oh. But, yeah, it'll be funny, but I still think the Eddie one would have been great because they're all at the same era. But, uh, but Tracy Morgan's so good, though, man. He's the best. Hello. Yeah, he's funny. Favorite comedian? Favorite comedian? Um, Sam Kinison. Oh, good. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I like them screaming weird voice guys, like him and uh, Bob Bocat play. Yeah, yeah, Bobcat, oh, man. He, he, was funny. he was funny. So Such a bizarre choice. Like to do that voice, like I thought that's really how he talked, and then I saw him in an interview, like when I was like seventeen or eighteen or something. I was like, "What? That fucking dude doesn't talk yeah, like he that." Talk like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had something that happened to him. Like he had a beef with somebody, and then they kind of fucking foiled his comic career. And oh, he had a beef with Seinfeld. Oh, uh, yeah. And so it kind of yeah. like spoiled his his career, I guess. But I don't know. Do you have a favorite professional wrestler? Well, yeah, Ultimate Warrior will always be my favorite. All right, well, that's the dish. We've been served by Mestizo. Thank you so much for that. And then uh, we'll wrap it up with, um, for a new listener, what album would you like them to start with? If like someone, if you were trying, if I mean, I, you can start at the beginning because the beginning is really the end for me. You know, I feel like I was most advanced on life, like movie, and so the ah. beginning of my records, it works its way backwards and then its way forward to now where we're at. So yeah, so th- with that, with that life, like movie, that they hear it and go, okay, this is this is what I'll get more of this, and then also like a. That's, That's a good one. Set them up. Me, you know, start at yeah. the beginning because you go back, yeah. you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. No. That. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um. And then, what can we plug? What's in the future for you right now? Well, more alphas coming, and I got like four albums I'm working on at the moment. So a lot of that, man. Just keep tuned if you want to keep tuned. Go to the Bandcamp and go to Spotify and Instagram. That's the only thing I'm acting in. And then, is there gonna be? Oh, I had that. There was the other acronym. Um, I W. Oh yeah. So it was what it was. Uh, it is. Oh, it's gonna it be. It, it will. It will be. I W. Coming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's what, what it will be. Yeah. Okay. It will those be are cool. That took be. me a little bit to figure out what those were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's past, present, and future. So yeah, I like what it. What it was is the past. You know. Yeah, I like it. All right, man. Do you have any final words for the people? Nah. Love you guys. 
be authentic, be yourself, uh, fuck the industry, don't do art for money, make money to support your art. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Great words of advice. All right, man, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for joining us. I'll reach out to you after I get this picture done. It was a genuine pleasure talking with you. Thank you both for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, man, have a great rest of your night. Thanks. Bye. Peace. Later. I make moves towards city landscape, standing skyscraper high, doing donuts in the parking lot while most are scraping by. I can buy words and empty years, build vision and vacant eyes. It's death to the layman's mind, complacently taking lies. I'm not nice about the All right, okay, well, as usual, um, once we get into the episode, I, f- I always feel a little bit better leading up to it. I, I, I'm a little scatterbrained, especially after the thing happening. But that was a good, that was a good conversation. How yeah, it was really fun. <clears throat> yeah, and really sweet. That was, <clears throat> I could sense you really feeling that. But that was, that was cool when he was talking about oh, the trying to the get concert. His, yeah. Mom and dad. Oh, my yeah. God. You, I, I have a story. I mean. Well, I know, but you. I, I was I have that child, but not trying to get my parents, but people back together in, in my parents' lives. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you just like when you're a kid, those, those are the I things know. that you do. You're like, oh, I want my... I, I remember a, uh, you have like a memory of something that felt good. And so you think, oh, I want that to be like that again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I thought that was cool. That was sweet. <clears throat> um, unfortunately. <clears throat> unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, it didn't work out. <laughs> but a good concert. <laughs> hey. No, that was cool. I was really wanting to, uh, um, I was just really wanted to have him on. And I didn't think he'd ever want to be on because he had a, he was doing kind of like his own little podcast thing, the Mestizo <laughs> show. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I was gonna ask if he was still doing that. I do feel. Did it feel like I was scat? Like, didn't have an idea of where I was going? Because usually I have. No. Okay. Good. <clears throat> yeah, that was a very nice chat. Um, our next uh, thing. Well, I don't know what I was gonna say. I feel I didn't. Oh, I hit. I want to. I was looking up that Timber Timber, and it looks like they have a tiny desk concert. So I thought, oh, I'll give that a look. Yeah, I want to say that um, I did. I had one of their songs as one of my song shares in someone's episode. I don't remember mm-hmm. what it was, but remember I really got into that oh, southern yeah. uh, southern mm-hmm. goth for a while there. Um, and I still really like it, but you know how like, you, when you're listening to certain musics for too long. The only thing that hasn't had that with me is <laughs> yeah, hip-hop. But... Hip-hop rock. No. <laughs> just kidding. Well, and that's the thing about this about Alpha. I can I'm, I'm no, I'll just continue to plug Alpha to every like people who don't haven't heard it cuz then maybe you'll be like, "Oh, I better go listen to this." They don't sound alike, but they are it's complementary. Uh, they very complementary of each other and there are times where they almost bleed into sounding like each other. It's so good and the and the and um yeah, the uh, I I'm sure in the intro I showed a nice long seg uh, segment of their their video from their uh, many heads many headed EP, but it's just I don't know it's so good to me it's just so good and um uh so I I start I deep dived into um, Cizo's music in the last few weeks um, just to get even way more familiar because I started thinking like I definitely want to get him on the show but again I didn't know if he was ever going to want to and it turns out it was just fucking great so um thanks hands made for um putting for putting that music out there um and that's zach he's the one that uh, put together like i know also, yeah so yeah thanks thanks to them for that and uh thanks um Cizo, for joining us on the show thank you everybody for listening and um, i think we'll get out of here now i i got a lot of drawing to finish sounds good i got dinner Oh, yeah, I do, too. Let's go eat dinner. All right, everybody, thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for watching. Remember to stay the hell away from our Twitter on Twix at DOD45show. Um, All our dot coms and socials at ArtByTai on Instagram at DOD45W on Instagram and ArtByTai.com, DOD45.com. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks, Macizo, from all of us here. I'd like to wish you happy drawing, happy conversing, and thanks for conspiring with us. We're out of here. Peace. Oh, D45.
Thank you for joining in on yet another episode of the DoD 45 show. Please hit the subscribe or follow button so that you never miss an episode. You can even go one step further by leaving us a review on the YouTube stream or on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever it is that you stream our show from. You can find me at Art by Ty on all the socials or at artbytie.com. And if you'd like to follow the DoD 45 show on social media, we're at DoD45W on Instagram, or you can go over to our website at DoD45.com where you can shoot us an email, join our mailing list, and watch all of our past episodes. Consider joining us for a live chat on the YouTube premieres of episodes every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Peace.